Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Private Corporate Council podcast. This is a presentation of Private Corporate Council, a law firm in downtown Orlando, Florida, dedicated to helping businesses succeed. And my name is Mary Covet Lowell. I'm a business attorney and your host today. And um, I'm pleased to say today we're going to be welcoming a guest who is an employment lawyer, Maria Hossein. And we're going to be talking about employee policies and procedures. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little story. True story. A few years ago, in the city of Brooksville, Florida, um, the town council voted that municipal employees must wear underwear and use deodorant as part of a dress code. The city council approved the dress code by a four to one vote as part of a wider effort to update their existing policies. The mayor opposed the revision, saying that the underwear edict takes away freedom of choice. The new dress code also prohibited exposed underwear and piercings anywhere except the ears. Repeat offenders could be fired. So what do you think about the city's adoption of a deodorant and underwear policy, which ended up being reported in the news? Was it a good idea or did it have unintended consequences? So in this episode of the Private Corporate Council podcast, we're going to be talking about employee policies and procedures. What are they? Why are they important? What businesses should have written employee policies and procedures and why? So as I mentioned, our guest today is employment attorney Maria Hussain. Maria, welcome. And could you please tell us a bit about yourself and your background in employment law? Um, Hello, everyone. My name is Maria Hossein. I am an attorney who practices employment and labor law, which is what I've been doing for the past nine years. I have been practicing for the state of Florida, which is one of the largest, if not the largest employee employer in the state of Florida. So I'm very familiar with drafting and um, issuing different procedures and also discipline to employees. And in the past, I've also worked for the Walt Disney Company, which as you know, is also a very large employer in Florida. So I have some experience at least witnessing different employer procedures, and I'm happy to be here today. Thank you for having me. Maria, in your experience as an employment attorney, have you seen many employers that have policies such as the city of Brooksville policies, um, that the deodorant underwear policy? It's funny that this is a topic that we're discussing today. Of course, uh, it sounds kind of outrageous when you're first thinking about it, but I actually have seen these sorts of policies before. Uh, For example, at the Walt Disney Company, there are policies about uh, the different ways that employees can dress, including haircuts, makeup, jewelry, nail polish. Uh, And at the state of Florida, at least um, at some state agencies, there are requirements for the same things, how long your beard can be, um, what your what hairstyle you can have, what nail polish colors you can have, and even wearing deodorant. I haven't seen any policies about underwear, but I have seen policies about underwear showing, if that makes sense. So if your underwear was showing outside of your clothing, that would definitely be included in a policy. If it's under your clothing and no one can see it, I haven't seen any policies about that in particular. So let's start at the beginning, Maria. Tell us a bit, what are employee procedures, policies and procedures, and why are they important for businesses? Hopefully, the best practice is that employee policies and procedures are written down somewhere and not just verbal policies and procedures. And what they really are is um, documents that outline an employer's expectations for their employee's conduct. Um, This is important for a variety of reasons, including that it sets expectations and it gives notice to the employees because let's be frank, if they don't know what the expectations are, then how are they going to follow them? It also gives employers guidelines for what to do when their policies and procedures are broken. So it might have uh, different disciplinary ranges in there to show what should happen if an employee isn't following a certain procedure. 
And the other thing that is really important about employee policies and procedures is it's a way to make sure that employees are treated equally so that on the back end, employees will hopefully not be able to allege that they are being treated differently due to certain protected classes such as race and sex and disability. So Maria, tell us what kinds of topics are typically included in employee policies and procedures and why? Well, at my current job, I was one of the people that helped to draft the employee handbook, and our handbook was about 63 pages long, so it definitely included a variety of topics. It's really up to the employer to decide which topics to include, depending on the kind of business that they are running and how many employees they have. Topics that we included in our employee handbook included things like attendance. For example, if an employee is not going to be able to come to work that day, what should they do in order to notify their employer? And on the flip side of that, if an employee is absent for a certain number of days within a month, what should happen? Should the employee be disciplined somehow or maybe talked to? Other uh, employee policies that can be included are drug testing. Perhaps uh, you have a procedure where you're drug testing employees every month, and that can be included so that it goes into detail about how that is arranged and what happens if an employee does test positive for a certain drug. Things like dress code, like we talked about at the beginning, could be included, and things about how the employer is expected to act, such as conduct unbecoming on and off the job. Of course, these procedures can vary depending on what kind of business it is, so an employer can also include certain job-specific expectations in the employee handbook. The employee handbook should probably include policies about discrimination and sexual harassment, which we would hope everybody already knows, but in an abundance of caution, it's a good idea to have these expectations written down. And finally, it's a good idea to have any discipline and policies about penalties for breaking these procedures included in writing as well, so that the employee knows that there are ramifications for not following these procedures. Okay, and now I'd like to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of employee policies and procedures. Let's start from the employer perspective. What are the pros and cons of employee policies and procedures from an employer perspective? There really are a lot of pros from an employer perspective. I think it's a great idea for any employer to have these sorts of policies. For example, one of the reasons it's an important uh, idea to have these written down is to make sure that any managers that you have treat every employee the same. So the reason that's important is that on the back end, then employees will hopefully not be able to accuse their employer of alleged uh, mistreatment of their employees based on a protected class such as race, sex, disability. So if the employee procedures specifically say, if an employee does this certain thing at work, then this is what will happen, then it helps to ensure that all of the employees are treated the same way. The other thing is that it sets expectations for employees. An employer might have a great idea in their head about what their ideal employee would be like and how they would act at work, but they might not be able to express that clearly to every single employee that they have working for them. So having them in writing really sets these expectations and puts the employees on notice about how they are expected to act at work. And uh, I guess if you want to talk about a little bit of cons for an employer, it's that it's paperwork. It's just an extra thing that the employer has to do. Uh, Unfortunately, I know it is a little bit time consuming, but it's one of those things that will really help the employer on the back end. And another con is that you have to keep them updated. So you might want to update your procedures every year or something to that effect as your internal procedures change so that the handbook and the written procedures are following along with your expectations. And what about from the employee perspective? What are the pros and cons? I think that a con from an employee perspective is that it's harder to hide certain shortcomings. It's harder to hide behind, oh, I didn't know that that was an expectation if it's something that it's right there in writing. Another con for an employee is that they might read your 63 page handbook as required and unfortunately not agree to a few of the pages, but unfortunately they still have to follow them in order to work there. And it also makes it a little bit hard for employees to request exceptions to certain rules. 
So if an employee wants special treatment or something like that, that might be a little bit harder for the employee. Of course, the exception being if they need an accommodation for an ADA covered disability or something like that, then those exceptions would of course be granted if, if applicable. And I guess another con is it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of reading for an employee to, to have to sit down and go through everything and try and commit it to memory. But again, the pros are sort of similar to the employer side that the employee knows their expectations. They know what they need to do when they show up to work and what the ramifications are for not doing them. So they have plenty of notice and that will help them in turn become a better employee. Okay, great. And one final question I have for you today, Maria. What steps should an employer follow to ensure that a business has appropriate employee policies and procedures? Well, that is a good question. The one thing that is definitely a good idea is, like I said, to have these written down. It is definitely a good idea to make sure everyone is on the same page to have it in writing. The other thing is if the employer has an attorney, that is a good idea to have the attorney really review all of the procedures before they are presented to the employees. You just want to make sure that there's nothing in there that could be construed as discrimination or unfair treatment or any or an unreasonable expectation. And additionally, when you have these written policies, an employer should make sure that they are requiring the employee to read them when they are hired and to sign some sort of acknowledgement saying that they have read the policies and that they agree to follow them. And then as they're updated every year or every two years, whenever you update them, you should also have the employees reread the policies and sign something again saying that they are aware of the updated policies. Those would be the best practices. Great, those are all very good suggestions. So thank you very much for joining us today, Maria. Thank you for having me. And thank you again to everyone um, in our audience. Today, we talked about employee policies and procedures, a very important subject that all employers should be aware of. Um, if you have any questions, please contact us at 407-647-7887 or email us at info at pcc.law. And if you'd like to learn more about the Private Corporate Council program and how we can help you and your business on your journey to success, please get in touch with us. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you the next time.